I can really get uh, zoomed in on things. I really I haven't taken care of people the way I should have because I zoomed in on this idea of getting people everywhere to like me. The WWE dream was a big one and I got to their doorstep by just obliterating myself and everyone around me for a tryout where I washed out ashamed. And that led to some of the most joyous performances I ever had because I was not afraid to lose that dream anymore. My dad died and he told me the phrase, keep looking up. And I put that on the merch and I wore it in my heart. And the WWE didn't mean it to me anymore. It was spreading the idea, the words. My Christian faith, my love, failing, near futile love of Christ, his love back to me, so big, so glorious. and I got real zoomed in on the book for a second. Um, I like doing shorts because they're less stressful. I always feel like an ASMR video has to be 20 minutes and with the audiobook inherently it's like 20 minutes to an hour and uh, I felt good. I have a couple of fun ideas that I might try to get out but I still want to work on the audiobook too, but working on greeting cards. I've always wanted to do greeting cards, and my web store opened up the option. Um, I do drop shipping through them, and they're like, we have greeting cards now, and I, I'm really excited. Uh, I hope I can make some clean, emotional pieces and some funny ones, too. Uh, working on a series of things called the Life Hurts Collection, <laughs> featuring barbed wire designs and stuff. Um, you might have seen them in some of my videos. Uh, really recently I got some samples, and my kiddo's wearing the barbed wire beanie tonight. The t-shirt already has a hole in it. <laughs> and uh, the hoodie's right behind me covered in white husky fur. So that's kind of hard to wear a white husky fur covered black hoodie. <laughs> the only thing it matches is the design. Um, brings to mind the barbed wire story that I was meaning to share with you guys anyway. It's a good one and for the people that like longer ASMR videos then this might get it longer than stopping right now. <laughs> so I was a referee when I was learning to become a pro wrestler. I got free training in exchange for being the only referee on their shows, the local company's shows for the most part. And that meant I trained all afternoon. I helped set up the ring. I trained all afternoon. Then I put on a referee shirt six four <laughs> taller than most of the talents no offense to anybody um skinny very skinny but very tall uh i had my soap opera hair down to my you know back then just imagine all this up here and uh i made a butt of myself in the back and wanted to be the star because Every pro wrestling trainee wants to be a star, I think. Like, now, please.
please, thanks. And I refed some shows where people got pretty wrecked and did some pretty wild stuff and pretty cool stuff, but it peaked right before I got to uh, have my first match. The first match isn't really the focal point to this, it's about barbed wire, right? And the human experience, my human experience as a referee, wanting and experiencing strung up barbed wire, you see, to blow off a feud, sometimes you have what's called a blow off to a feud, and it's when you have a big main event where you alter the rules because they're fictional. Anyway, and so the ropes came down, pro wrestling ropes, imagine a pro wrestling ring, right, square, four posts, and you take down the bouncy ropes, which are actually just elevator cables, or rope, they still hurt, by the way, uh, and imagine stringing up barbed wire, which hurts way more than elevator cables. So you have a square, four posts, and barbed wire, barbed wire, barbed wire. And I, because I wanted to be the star of everything, in the main event, with two best friends turned enemies, it was a lovely story of blood, betrayal, and brutality, okay? And I wanted to be a part of it so bad that I begged my trainers, actually both of them, to throw me into the barbed wire because I was ready. And I knew I was ready uh, through, through a series of other events I'll tell you at another time. So I was ready for the violence and the pain and I was excited and they said, yeah, we thought about it. No. And I went, are you sure? I'm offering myself up for free. Would you like to throw me into the barbed wire to make the match better? And they went, hmm, we'll let you know, but probably not. I went, oh, okay. The show reaches the climax. I've already riffed, I think, pretty much everything. And spent a half hour stringing up, stringing up, stringing up the barbed wire uh, between all four posts with a couple other folks. Barbed wire, by the way, is very tricky if you're not familiar with it. You really have to give it respect because it doesn't respect you because you are made of meat and skin and it is made of jagged metal. So real barbed wire, all four sides of the ring, and it's there. And the crowd starts vibrating in the silence before the music even starts. See, that's the beauty of a hardcore or altered rules main event, something really out there. There's a din, there is a moment where everything gets quiet before the main event participants' musics play. The first Elimination Chamber, for the pro wrestling fans out there ever, Survivor Series, question mark, the first one ever, one of my favorite DVDs I ever bought and played the heck out of, not only because Shawn Michaels did a comeback in half-finished tights, they looked fine, but they, they didn't look like Shawn Michaels tights, he did a comeback with a broken back, and it was beautiful, great story. Everyone did a great job. Triple H had his larynx literally crushed for real. Beautiful story. Amazing. Um, the first time a match ever happened. Absolutely brutal. And there's this quiet before the first entrance music plays where people see the barbarity of this metal structure and they expect real pain from a fictional slash predetermined sport. Same thing here, but the lights are up, there's more fans than normal. The building is almost hot, the air, um, it's in a church, <laughs> but a large church space that they run out to people. So there's this no rope barbed wire match in a church, if I recall right. The barbed wire is strung right 
before the music plays, there's this silence that goes up. And then the music. And then one of my trainers does his rounds. It's backwards. Usually good guys come out second because the bad guys need to come out first to make everyone angry. And then the good guys placate. So this time the bad guy was the champ and the good guy had to come out first because champ always comes out last no matter who he is, who she is for the most part. Trainer one comes out as a good guy and he slides into the ring or tries to. And the first thing he does, he catches his wrist on the barbed wire. starts bleeding and cussing immediately and on his wrist tape even though question mark about morals and ideals he has sharpied closer to god written on his wrist tape and immediately blood smears across the tape that's the scene i no longer care about me getting thrown into the barbed wire as much i am in the human experience. The building is packed for the size. There are people almost to the wall. Everyone's eyes are on him. He's getting into the ring more carefully this time. I'm already in there because I helped string it all up and I wasn't going to get out. And then his opponent's music, his former best friend's music hits. And he comes out with the title around his waist. And he takes his time gloating, telling everyone he's the man. Anyway, fast forward, the match is going, boom, boom, boom. It's been about one minute since the bell rang and the fight started. And I, knowing something about what was about to happen, was expecting that thing to happen. Instead, Trainer B, champ, got behind me. Trainer A, challenger, ends up hitting me and shoving me. I stumble over the champ who is behind me, possibly accidental, possibly on purpose, I don't know, and I go flying back, arms and shoulders perfectly spaced, <laughs> except for the arteries and everything, right onto the barbed wire, and the crowd loses their minds because the thing about barbed wire matches there have been many from puerto rico to japan to america the barbed wire is the third person okay imagine the third character in this match is the barbed wire and it is around you can see it from anywhere in the building and one of the first things that happens after my trainer cutting himself on accident getting in was the ref goes in. And that only leaves two other people, doesn't it? That only leaves the champion and the challenger. And they did. It was awesome. <laughs> For early 20s me, I couldn't have been happier with anything. Catching that barbed wire was in a way an initiation, even if it was accidental. For me, it meant the world. And when I mess around in Photoshop, when I work on barbed wire, something just tells me that story in the back of my mind. Reminds me of what it was like in that hot church expanse of screaming people. That barbed wire. Both my trainers and me. sure, but it was cool, and I had some Under Armour on long before the WWE sponsorship, and it was okay. Barely bled, I think. I maybe had a scratch on one of the backs of my arms, but it was cool because people screamed for me, partially in excitement, partially in sympathy, that connection between human 
difference that forms in the entertainment space. It's priceless. You can't put a price on it, even though TV ads, sponsorship money, yada yada. When you get living people in a building and show them something special, they receive it in exchange for their currency, but that fades for a few moments. Each participant on the show, which there are many, hopefully connects with them. Right now there's a thunderstorm happening. It kind of makes me think of that. Like, I am inside my house and it is outside, but it is happening around me and I am a part of it. Just like everyone else. Everyone on this street is a part of it together. Brings us all together. Um, there were tornadoes this week. people uh, in our town were to think it was 300 people or 300 homes. I think it's people. Um, we have a Bible study Tuesday mornings, fairly small, uh, five guys. We were trying to think of how to help. I don't know if we did enough, but we were wanting to do, and we were thinking about helping, and I'm sure we will do something if it's it's a call to me to do better I think it's a call for you if you want to do to do better you don't have to go to a church and give them money you can just give money to charities directly no soapbox Jesus loves you have more weird stories. I'm here if you want. I love you too. Until next time, good talk.